Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Central Scotland and we're going to revisit one of my local breweries here in Clipmanninshire. You've seen me review numerous things from these guys before and I would probably describe this brewery as a kind of session ale brewery if it comes to it. So for this one we're going to head down the road to Aloha and we're having a taste of another beer from Williams Brothers Brewing Company. This one in particular is the Redial which they're describing as a craft lager and it comes in at 4% percent ABV. Probably my kind of the, probably the beer I have most regularly from these guys would be the Caesar Augustus, which is a kind of lager IPA hy hybrid, a very, very kind of hoppy lager, that one, which is really quite nice, actually, and one of the most widely available beers from these guys, along with the Joker IPA. Other favourites I have from these guys, probably Pavlov's Dog, I really quite like that one. Paradigm Shift is probably the best beer that I've had, a kind of uh, stronger radio, that one, and I also really like March of the Penguins, which is their stout. I'm not sure if they still do that, but that was always a very, very nice beer. But very curious to see how this one turns out. And as I say, check out this brewery if you're particularly interested in low alcohol kind of session beers because they're pretty good at that. And uh, it's one of the more widely available Scottish craft breweries that you're going to come across as well. But really looking forward to trying something a little bit different from them. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one. This is the first lager beer I've had from them, I think, since I reviewed Hipsway a little bit. Uh, uh, a little, what would that be? About a year or two ago now, actually. So looking forward to this one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. Anyway, Anyway, as is usual with my reviews, then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Williams Brothers before. No doubt I will add some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you, that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review, it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated so anyway, to tell you a little bit about Williams Brothers Brewing then, so on to my brewery notes, so this company started off in the old family owned Glen Brew home brewing shop through in Glasgow the first beer that they produced was in inspired by a 17th century Gaelic recipe for Freya Heather Ale and of course this is named after the Celtic mythological hero. So in 1988 a woman of Gaelic descent came into the brew shop with a translation of this ancient recipe from Gaelic into English of course but she wanted to create a batch to share with her family and she agreed to share the recipe with Bruce in exchange for actually um, for actually brewing the beer herself and I think there's some sort of deal these days where she basically gets as much as she wants for kind of kicking off the whole company but they produced the first batch which was only five barrels in Tainu railway station over in Argyll and Butte and the following year demand for this had kind of increased massively and the official start date of the Williams Brothers Brewery is listed as 1992 so Scott Williams decided to join his brother Bruce at this point and they began to develop other historic recipes such as the Groatsit which is a gooseberry wheat ale the Kelpie which is a seaweed ale I still need to try both of those actually. The Ebelung, which is the Elderberry Black, and also the Alabat Scots Pine Ale. And I think I've reviewed both of those last two for you on the channel before. Definitely the Alaba. But these four recipes were produced at the Craig Mill Brewery in Straven between 1998 and 2004. And in 2004, they actually made the move to Alawa, which is the which is now called the fourth brewery in Kellybank. Uh, and this was where they adopted the name, or when they adopted the name, Williams Brothers Brewing Company. Oddly enough, these guys are the last brewery still on the go in the old brewing capital of Scotland and over the years they've basically built up the capacity of this brewery to be 100,000 hectolitres and they've got plans to build a new brewery as well near their current site which will have a total capacity of 200,000 hectolitres. So yeah, Clip Manager, as I've told you before, known for being a whisky bond, you know there's lots of whisky bonds all over the place where they leave the whisky to age, our houses actually get a little bit of this kind of black moss which comes as a result of the, you know, the angel share, the alcohol going away and things like that. Um, so it's, it's really interesting that. It's a bit of a shame that they are the only brewery in the old historic brewing capital of Scotland. But, you know, the in, in the 80s and things like that, the industries uh, did not do very well in Scotland. And it was only with the return of the Scottish Parliament that, you know, things kind of started to pick up again economically. And now we've got lots of craft breweries, which obviously is uh, a very good sign. But these guys are one of the more older and established ones. And like I said before, if you're interested in kind of 
sessionable ales, then this is the one of the breweries that you want to check out. I've seen the Joker IPA and the Cesar Augustus over in Sweden. They do have a deal with Sestemble Agate for those of you watching over there. And um, yeah, they are, you know, they do export quite a bit beyond that from what I gather as well. So if you are drinking some of the Williams Brothers beers, let me know where you're actually managing to find these. But that's all you really need to know about Williams Brothers for the moment. And uh, if you want to learn more, check out the brewery website. And of course, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and the usual social media things. If you want to see all the different beers that they do, check out their rate beer page or indeed the untapped list as well. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So the other notes I have on this one and the, the stats of this beer is that it's hot with Equinox, which of course we now know is Equinox. They hadn't updated their website with that. Savinsky Goldings, which are from Poland, and Magnum, and they've got a malt base of Lager Malt in here too. So yeah, that's all you need to know about that. Let's get rid of the brewery notes just now and we'll have a little taste of this beer then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. I do wonder if the artwork on this is meant to be a kind of reference to the fact that everyone is always glued to their phones these days, you know. It's, I think it's a bit bad actually how obsessed people are with their phones to be honest with you. There you can see the nice old Celtic symbol um, on the bottle cap there. I do like the Williams Brothers bottle caps and um, yeah it tells you a little bit on the back here as well about the beer. So it says a delicious craft lager. Redial has been cold fermented over several weeks with pure lager malt and a blend of hops from around the world to deliver a crisp and refreshing citrus taste. So yeah, let's get it out then and we will get on with the taste and I'm really curious to see how this beer turns out. So yeah, as you can see, nice little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get it out and into the glass. Yeah. That looks pretty good. That'll do me for just now. So yeah, as you can see with this one, and as you'd expect from a lager, it's poured a lovely kind of pale golden straw colour. Actually crystal clear that, and if I look at the rest of the bottle, there's not any sediment or anything in this one, but a lovely pale golden straw colour. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head on this one. Uh, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there and a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall it looks very, very nice and uh, kind of just what you would expect from a lager beer. So nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. So let's take a look at the aroma and just see how we get on. Oh yeah. Now, this one definitely smells a little bit like a kind of it smells a bit like a German pills, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's not quite got some of the, the, the breadiness that you would expect from the Czech pills in it. It's more like a German pills now. Um, and of course they are the same styles, but I always find there's a little bit of difference in the way the malt and the hops and things come out in these beers. Um, but yeah, to me, this one comes across, it comes across very Jeremy and the Savinsky um, Goldings that are in there, Polish hops, they'll be very similar in character to the likes of the Czech Sats or Zatitz as they call it and the Hallertown, the Titnanger. You definitely get a lot of a kind of noble hoppy quality with this one, a little bit of earthiness in there, a uh, little bit of a floral quality and a bit of grassiness as well. To me, the green side of the beer really leans towards the kind of grassy side of things rather than anything, than anything else. Um, with the... Um, on the fruity side of things, you can definitely pick up a little bit of a limey quality to it, but at the same time, most of the fruity esters are a little bit just grassy, if that makes sense. So I would say that this, um, you know, this one, the, the fruity qualities are definitely limey, and that's what you're going to get from the Equinox Hop, or Equinox as they were calling it on the website. Um, it really gives you this kind of, it's not quite mojito-ish in its limey qualities, it's quite kind of dark, but still at the same time quite juicy. So definitely a nice little bit of grassiness in there and some uh, some nice kind of limey notes. They're all, they're all kind of mixing together. Not too much else coming out of this one in the way of fruitiness, I would say. In terms of the malt base, um, definitely a little bit kind of smooth and white bready, a little bit biscuity as well. Um, but I would suspect, just going from the way the malt's coming out of this one, it does smell like it's German malt. Maybe it's Weiermann malt from Germany. That kind of smoothness that you're getting out of this one is distinctly German for me. Like I said, when it comes to Czech laggers, um, or Czech Pilsons. This would be like a Svetli or a Leitzak. I forget which way around, whether which one's the blonde and which one's the amber. But if it was Czech, it would smell a little bit more kind of bready and less crisp than it does. To me, this smells like it's German malt that's in here. So I'd be curious to know about that, actually. So, um... Yeah, let's leave it at that for the aroma then. As I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you taste it. But we're going to taste this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the Redial, a craft lager coming in at 4% ABV from Williams Brothers Brewing Company in Alawa here in Clint Manager in the centre of Scotland. One of my local breweries. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, skull. I 
that's really pretty nice actually. Um, first impression of this one is that it's considerably more malty than I thought it was going to be. Um, it actually in some ways um, has a little bit of a Hellas quality to it, a Munich Hellas quality. Um, it's, a, it's a lot more crisp than one of those would be right enough, but um, it does the way that some of the malty qualities come out is distinctively like a, a German Hellas, so that's an interesting point to make about this one. But that is a really, in terms of rating this as a Pilsner beer, um, Lager beer, that one is really pretty well done, I have to say. So thumbs up to Williams Brothers Brewery. And again, they're sort of reinforcing this um, preconception I have of the brewery, if you like, that they are a session beer brewery. They've done a good job of this, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. So, in terms of the... Uh, in terms of the, the malt side of this beer then, straight away, you're going to get the middle of your palate just blanketed with this nice, smooth, white bready quality there. It does get a little bit thicker the further that you go into the flavour. As you move into the centre of your palate, um, there's a little bit of a kind of biscuity note in there, and it does get crisper the kind of further that you go into the... Um, into the flavour. There is a little bit of a kind of almost bread and buttery note coming out of this one, almost a little bit of like diacetyl or something like that. So it does have a wee bit of that kind of breadiness and that's something that you would normally associate with the uh, the Czech beers, although not it's not too often that you get the diacetyl coming out in those, I don't think. But it definitely has a really nice kind of drinkability that you would want from one of these kind of lager beers. And I'm finding that the more that I drink of it, the sweeter that it gets. But I like that smooth white breadiness that it has. It has got a little bit of an almost kind of buttery quality that comes out more and more in the aftertaste and in the very centre of your palate. You've maybe just got a little tiny bit of a slightly caramelly note in there, but the further that you move out from the centre of your palate, it's a little bit more kind of biscuity, like McVitie's digestive biscuits. It's kind of like that, actually. On the hoppy side of things, it is kind of what I would, I would expect. I mean, the Polish hops that are in here, the Savinsky Goldings, I would say that this one, and the Magnum, of course, is can kind of give you similar things. It gives you that nice little bit of sweet earthiness in the back corners of your palate. As you come further forward around the sides of your tongue, it's distinctively more kind of floral, uh, but it's quite a noble floor and it's not quite big and spicy like you're going to get from some of these American hops then round the very front curve of the tongue it's just that little bit lighter and grassy and if you go behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer so for me straight away with this one you're going to notice that kind of light juicy limey quality coming out of this one and that lingers into the aftertaste really but around the front edge of the tongue it really is quite it's just grassy Limey, and there's maybe a wee touch of lemon or something like that in it as well. I mean, it's um, it's a very nice, just crisp, refreshing beer. This uh, there's maybe a little bit of a sort of appley peary ester in that oily bubble behind the front of your tongue too. Um, but overall, this is one of these beers that doesn't do anything particularly surprising for the style. But it's just really quite well crafted, and again, it sort of reinforces that thing I said earlier that Williams Brothers are pretty good when it comes to sessionable beers. So yeah, um, in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, I would describe this one as being fairly, you know, light bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth in it, but at the same time it does give you a level of crispness, which is what you want from this beer style. Um, I would say that the mouthfeel is more wet than anything else. It's got quite a wet mouthfeel to it, this one. But maybe in some ways, I've noticed this with the other Scottish beers that I've been trying so far, um, you always notice the mineral quality in uh, Scottish water. Scottish water comes across as being very, very clean and I found the same with uh, with Norwegian beers actually, that they always come across as having this very clean mouthfeel and you can pick that up in this one straight away. And, and of course this is something that will change when you're moving about between countries because obviously I spend most of my time in the south of Sweden and, uh, and Denmark. But to me the mouthfeel of this beer is really wet and um, quite crisp and clean. You've all got a, a nice little bit of hoppy bitterness in there, I think maybe about 20 IBUs. By no means is it going to blow the head off you. Uh, the maltiness is quite smooth, but at the same time it's quite sweet. It definitely leans more towards the sweet side of things. And you've got a little bit of a juicy fruitiness to this beer as well. But overall, another really nice, quite sessionable beer from Williams Brothers Brewing. And, uh, you know, I'm not surprised. They've done a good job of this one. If I'm comparing it to other... Um, 
beers and beer styles and things like that. If you like, for example, the um, Harvest and Shehalyan and Scott here in Scotland, you will enjoy this beer as well. It's kind of similar to that. And um, if I compare it to the wider spectrum of uh, of lager beers and things, um, you know, I'm trying to think of any other ones that I can compare it to. But if you like your lager beers to be that little bit more kind of wheaty, not not wheaty, more like white bready, this is one that is going to kind of suit you down to the ground. If you like your Czech lagers, you will enjoy this one, but it, it's almost a little bit Czech in its malt base, but it's got a little bit more of the kind of poppy and crisp qualities that you'd expect of the, the German Pilsner as well. So interesting uh, blend of things going on here, and it's definitely one that you want to check out if you enjoy the style. So let's leave it at that for this one. This one is the Redial, a craft lager at 4% ABV from Williams Brothers here in Clipmanager in the centre of Scotland. So until the next time, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Williams Brothers Brewing as well, and I'm sure I'll return to these guys at some point in the near future and do check out my social media until the next time it's landed just now i'll catch you guys later make sure you check out williams brothers brewing from, from pardon me from aloha and clip manager here in the center of scotland it's you, let's go cheers